40 years. 40 years. <laughs> King of Kush for 40 years. I mean, you gotta let that settle in. You gotta let that marinate. 40 years, Moshe is the king of Kush, according to the book of Jashar, Hawashar. All right, we're reading that, man, 71. We all, we read 76 last time. I want to go back to 75, but I want you to marinate on it. I need you to marinate. 40 years as the king of Kush. So imagine what's going on, man, in these, in these Israelites, man, while Moshe is being, is, is literally the top dog in Kush. Moses leaves Egypt, has that, you know what I'm saying, scuffle with this uh, Egyptian. After the Egyptian broke in that house of a Hebrew brother, he took his wife in the presence of the Hebrew brother. He took, his, he, he took the Hebrew brother's wife, tried to kill the Hebrew brother, and Moshe put him down by law. Of course, Pharaoh didn't like that. Moses left. Now, this is around 18 years old when this happened for Moses. At 27, he's the king of Cush. He reigns as the king of Cush for 40 years. He gets an honorable dis discharge at 66, 67. They say, look, man, we know you don't serve our gods. His wife is like, he ain't even touched me. He, he got this hand-me-down Cush wife. She mad at him because Moses ain't never laid a finger on her. Of course, all the homies are like, oh, you know, Moses, man, he gone off, man. He's the king of Cush. He don't care about us. You know, Moses don't care about us. He got his Kushite wife. He's, he's probably serving Kushite guys, so they didn't care. So those that wanted some type of beef or gripe, they, you know, look, Most High makes it real easy. He'll put everyone to a test. He'll say, yeah, you know, give them space to operate. Because if Moses is right there in their face, of course, you know what I'm saying, they'll have a different outcome. But when you give people space to operate, man, you see the decisions and the flow that they really got. When, they, when Moses is over there being the king of Cush, we're going to read about in chapter 75 what happens to a certain group of the tribe of Ephraim, about 30,000 tribal members of Ephraim that say, look, you know, Moses is doing his own thing. The Most High has appointed. His period is, is complete for us to leave Egypt. It's time to go now. They wanted to go now. Remember from day one, you've been surfing the wave. You've been watching. You know, folks been all ready, man. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let go, let go, let go. It's time to go. Get ready, get ready, get ready. November 2nd, <laughs> January 2nd, February 16th. They always got a date. September 28th, they always got a date, right? Everyone got a date for you. Because we, you know what I'm saying, are rocking tribal people. People always asking, when y'all gonna go to your land? You know what I'm saying? When's everyone gonna do this? Man, we, we, we've been to our land many times, you know what I'm saying? So we, we flow when we flow, you know what I mean? We, we flow the best we... <laughs> Because now we got a place to build. See, now you can actually plan and flow. Moses planned intricately. Moses was the king of Cush for 40 years. Then he got put in prison for 10 years by his future wife's father-in-law, or his, his future father-in-law, his future wife's pops. Now the KGB calls him, KJV calls him uh, Jethro, right? But in the book of Jashar, they call him Red Well. So he sits down with Red Well after saving his daughters at the well, you know, the whole thing, drawing the water at the well, fighting off these guys, trying to hijack them. He gets invited over to Red Well or Jethro's house, tells Jethro the story, he says, man, I was king of Kush for 40 years, got an honorable discharge. I had to get out of Egypt in a hurry because of that situation. And instead of with the story you thought, that Jethro or Red Well is going to take care of my boy Moses, right? He's going to take care of him feed him, do you know what I mean, give him land, nah, man, Jethro put him in jail, Reuel put Moses in a dungeon for 10 years, now anybody want to compare their story, their life with Moshe, you're going to have to comprehend being put in a dungeon for 10 years after serving as the king of Cush for 40 years, now during all that time, what do the Israelites have to say about this, right, some of them are rocking with Moses, like, whoa, you see the way the Moses is using Moses, Moshe and, and, and raising up, you know what I'm saying, the Kushites for good. You see the good they're doing because Moses is, is at the helm of it. You see what the Most High is doing. They were able to see it, and they knew the Most High was working on something. But some people didn't witness it. And because they had a valiant army, right, or they had valiant, strong, young, valiant men, they trusted in their own strength. 
and they left Egypt too soon, or it's always about, let's go, 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 go. The Most High told you to fall back and redeem yourself. Assemble yourself. That doesn't mean, you know what I'm saying, freak out. It means start to assemble yourself. Remember a while. Meditate on the law. Meditate on the command. What? Not putting another power before your power, man. You see, killing and stealing didn't get you here. Wearing fringes or not wearing fringes or all these Israelite customs didn't get you here. Being hijacked got you here. Believing in your strength and not Hawa, what Hawa is laying in front of you. When Hawa lays an order in front of you, it's for you to witness or, you know, go say, I got strength, I'll do my own thing. I got my own valiancy, oh, man. So what they build in land, we'll build, we'll, we'll do all, we'll do this and we'll do that. I mean, you can either say, hey, I want to contribute. I see what the Most High is doing. I want to water the root that watered me. I want to water the root that watered me. Nah, you know, we want you to stop building what you're building, to come over here to tell us or ask us why we're not building over here. No, 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 we're building. The most sides working, we're flowing, and everyone that's building, keep building. If you want to know more about what we're building, hit us up, choose up at 432thedrop.com, and we'll build. Let's build, you know what I mean? Hijack free, let's build. And this is all we're doing. And if you're building, we support that. We work together, we rock together. But it's all about listening to the sound. And when the most high lays it out, when the most high shows you something, when the most high gives you the steps, it's for you to take them. You gotta walk through that door. All the most high can do is show you the door. And when it's watered you, you water it. You water the roots. You respect your elders. You respect your roots. You respect your flow or you get washed up. Maybe you forgot that there's many ways and we keep renewing, keep being rejoiced. You know what I mean? Most high said rejoice. He didn't say come home and, and, and fear me when I come home. You know me, I, I, don't, I don't even say that word. When I read the script, I never say fear because Moshe never said fear because Joshua never said fear because priest, king, Preston John never said fear. They write that in to trigger something inside of you. It's already inception. It's already encoding fear. Nah, when I come home, if my children got fear in their eyes, I'm doing something wrong. When I come home, if my wife got fear in her eyes, something wrong, man. But when I come home and my children and my wife are redeeming and they're rejoicing and they're just happy to see me, then I knew it's all in order, it's all flowing. When the Most High makes it in his appointed time, you better be rejoicing like he said to rejoice, but you can't rejoice unless you see clearly. <laughs> when you talk Drakon and Dragon in the etymology, you get seeing clearly, 360 round table. 360 degrees, see clearly, round table, knights of the round table, King Arthur or King David. Now you're talking knights and dragon. And when you talk knights and dragon, you talk fire, water, air, and land, period. It's that simple. If you got an issue with pure fire, pure water, pure air, or having a pure land, then you have an issue, issue with the dracon. The Drakon doesn't look like one thing. It's an etheric energy on every level. It doesn't have to look like one thing. It's only framed and shaped to look like you think a dragon looks because it's coming for war. War on you or war against the hijack? Well, let's see in history. Have the dragons declared war on you? Well, if the Most High sent them on you, like Moses 21 and 6, and then you beg Moses to told Most High, please bring the dragons back. Please let these uh, fiery serpents stop uh, jamming us up. And Moses then did what? Created a dragon that bit you with a flame that healed you and gave you life. So if you got a problem with life, then maybe you do got a problem with fire, water, ether, and your land. Because life is your land, your connection, your covenant is your land. Hawa is smokeless fire, pure fire, pure water. That's your drakan. That's what you're getting to. That's what you're flowing to. 
that's what it is, you know what I mean? So when we listen to the Most High, it's not about trusting in our own strength because the Most High, ble all the blessings the Most High gave you is not so you can trust in the blessings over the Creator. The appointed time, only the Most High knows. Don't come get at us, hey, amen. When's the appointed time for everyone to do this and do, man, we are already flowing in a flow. You wanna water that? You wanna flow with it? Watch your high. Go with the wave and know that the wave keeps renewing. The wave is a, re a wave of renewal. If your focus is not going back to get all the babies and bring that up, you know what I'm saying, and surf that all the way to the shore and then go and get more babies, more water, and create a bigger wave and more waves until you have become water until you stop getting washed up on the shore, until you stop turning into chaos, man. So let's read the story about order versus chaos, about the children of Ephraim who literally felt like it was the appointed time. The time was complete according to who? See, they thought they were trusting in Hawa, but they were trusting in their own valiancy, their own strength, their own pride. Because they said, look at Moshe over there being the king of Kush for 40 years, man, what's this guy doing? We can do better than that. Most high is with us, right? Yeah, we see that something's working, but maybe we don't. And that's when you have the confederacy. Those that become confederate against you get washed up with the way. Those that flow, when you are in order, <laughs> Moshe is in order in Kush. He's not out of order. But if your perspective is against Moshe, then yeah, you're gonna take some, uh, you know, you're gonna take a position against the way. And what happens to Ephraim? Let's get it. Sephar, at Sephar, we in chapter 75, man. Bang, bang. Love to the tribe, but get it. At that time, in the 118th year of Israel, going down into Egypt, there went forth from Egypt valiant men, 30,000 on foot from the children of Israel, who were all of the tribe of Joseph of the children of Ephraim and the son of Joseph. For they said the period was complete. They said the period was complete. Not Hawa, whoever's whispering in their ears saying, let's go, the time's complete. We gotta do our own thing. Yeah, we see with the Moses, he's, he's going too slow with Moses. Moses, man, he, he, he's into Cush. The period's complete, let's go, man. Forget Moses, man, forget all that, man. We're Ephraim, let's go. We're valiant men. Let's go. So they said that the period was complete, which Hawah had appointed to the children of Israel in the time of old, which he had spoken to Abram. And these men girded themselves, and they put each man his sword, every man his armor, and they trusted to their strength, not Hawah. They trusted to their strength. And they went out together from Mitzrayim with a mighty hand, but they brought no provision for, for the road, only silver and gold. Not even bread for that day did they bring in their hands, for they thought of getting their provisions for pay from the Palestine. And if not, they would take it by force. And these men were very mighty and valiant men. One man could pursue a thousand and two could rout 10,000. Look how strong they were. One man could pursue a thousand and two men could rout 10. 10,000 men. They were so strong. Oh, they were smart. They were intelligent. They were strong. They said, we got the drop. We ain't waiting for Moshe. We don't, we don't want that order, that design to fully come into fruition. We can do it ourselves. Let's go. And these men were very mighty and valiant men. One man could pursue a thousand, two could rout ten thousand. So they trusted to their strength and went together as they were. And they directed their course toward the land of Gath. And they went down and found the shepherds of Gath feeding on the children, or <laughs> feeding on the cattle of the children of Gath. And they said to the shepherds, give us some of the sheep for pay that we may eat for we are hungry. We have eaten no bread this day. And the shepherd says, Are they our sheep or cattle that we should give them? Because these are shepherds of Hawaii. It's like, these are Hawaii's sheep. These are Hawaii's cattle. Are they ours for us to give to you, children of Ephraim, who want to do your own damn thing? 
I mean, they, they knew the drought. And they said to the shepherds, give us some of the sheep that we may eat, for we are hungry, for we have not eaten no bread this day. And the shepherds said, are they our sheep or cattle that we should give them to you for pay? So the children of Ephraim approached to take them by force. And the shepherds of Gath shouted over them that their cry was heard at a distance. So all the children of Gath went out to them. And when the children of Gath saw the evil doings of the children of Ephraim, they returned and assembled the men of Gath, and they put on each man his armor and came forth to the children of Ephraim for battle. And they engaged with them in the valley, in the valley of Gath, they engaged in battle, and the battle was severe. And they smote from each other a great many on that day. And on the second day, the children of Gath sent to all the cities of the Palestine that, should, that they should come up to help, saying, Come up unto us and help us, that we may smite the children of Ephraim, who have come forth from Egypt to take our cattle and to fight against us without cause, because they're doing their own thing. Now the souls of the children of Ephraim were exhausted with hunger and thirst, for they had eaten no bread for three days, and forty men went forth from the or 40,000 men went forth from the city of the Palestine to the assistance of the men of God. So here comes 40,000 Palestine to go handle Ephraim. And these men were engaged in battle with the children of Ephraim, and Hawa delivered the children of Ephraim into the hands of the Palestine. So they smote all the children of Ephraim, all who had gone forth from Mitzrayim. None were remaining but 10 men doing their own damn thing. We gotta go, we gotta go. Nah, nah, this way, this way, no, nope, that way, no, nope, that way, no, nope, that way. Without seeing the fruit, without seeing the vision, without waiting for the appointed time that's in the heart bone. But if you ain't at peace with your fire, with your water, with your air and ether, if you're not seeking out Preston John, if you ain't seeking your priest king, if you ain't seeking your fire, might not have a vision to see clearly. If you're against seeing clearly, you're against your flow, then you're not going to see and you're going to trust your own strength. You're going to get antsy and, and get jumpy and that's not the spirit of the Most High. Whenever somebody's antsy and jumpy around me, I know they're not at peace. Whenever someone's confused all the time, they're not at peace. There's something they're not seeing. There's, there's something else in them, all right? that's being parasitical towards their vision because they just, but the, you know, you know someone who just has a flow. And sometimes people go in and out of that. You gotta keep fighting to get your flow because when you have a blocker, just like an artery, something might be blocking it. And you have to go within, you have to meditate, and you have to focus on the most high, put the most high first and pray that you can see clearly, especially right now because we getting jammed up too much. As you see, this is a tribal flow. I'm, I'm relating this tribally to you, all right? Because we've been through it all in Drop Nation. You got, you know, folks that, you know what I'm saying, is in and out, you know, all over the place, confused, antsy, this, 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 you know, going their own way, doing whatever. They, 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 you just got to fall back and let it happen. But for us, we know when the Most High shoots an arrow, man, when that arrow shoots out, it has to be steady. And when you can come, man, when you can see a flow, when you can see what we've done, and you can see a flow from 2014, it's all praise to why that we started saying one thing, and we're going to continue, you know what I'm saying, on every level to, you know, bring that up clearer and clearer and clearer. But we never veered off our path. We don't switch up. You don't hear me saying nothing other than keep the commandments. All praise the Most High. You ain't spinning on a ball. You are from here. That is the indigenous truth and you are in the frequency of the nine. And that's what you get right here at 432 to drop now. That's what you got in 2014. And all you seen us was clarify our frequency, clarify our frequency and crystallize. Yeah, we've, we've grown, we crystallized for sure, but we're still the same steady arrow hitting the target. All praise the why. And it's the order, it's the flow. I mean, you find that, you contribute to it, Keep flowing with us. We love you, man. Let's get it. All right, so the shepherds said, are they our sheep to give to you? Ephraim says, nah, man. 
I don't care. I'm going to take it by force. It goes down. 40,000 men went forth from the cities of Palestine to assist the men of God. And these men were engaged in battle with the children of Ephraim. And Hawa delivered the children of Ephraim to the Philistine. And only 10 men were remaining. And the Palestine also fell a great many, you know, 20,000 men, and they buried, and their brother carrying them and buried them in their cities. And the slain of the children of Ephraim remained forsaken in the valley of Gath for many years and days and were not brought to burial. Verse 20, and the men who had escaped from the battle came to Mitzvah. So they came to Egypt. The men who had escaped, remember how many escaped? Oh, and none were remaining. All right, verse 16, and none were remaining but 10 men. So 10 men out of the 30,000 that they started with is still alive. I'm not making this up. <coughs> All right. 10 men out of 30,000 is alive at this point. They go back to Egypt to go tell Pops. Now, Pops is still alive. Ephraim is still alive in Egypt. So now they got to go back to Ephraim and tell them that their sons, his sons have damn near perished. Only 10 of this tribe is remaining at this point. And the men who had escaped the battle came to Egypt and told all the children of Israel all that had befallen them. And their father Ephraim, Ephraim, mourned over them. So Pops is mourning now. Now Pops is in mourning like, how come y'all just couldn't hear the sound? How come you couldn't see clearly? Why did you have to go your own way? Why did you got to do your own thing? Why you let pride take you that far? And their father Ephraim mourned over them many days, and his brethren came to console him. And he came unto his woman, and she bore a son. And he called his name Beria, Beria, for she was unfortunate in his house. Now we're going to take that in to the bottom of 76. For this was from Hawah, for Hawah had requited him evil for evil, which in his days he had done to Israel. So this is the Pharaoh. Now we got the Pharaoh dying. Now he's cursed. While he's cursed, Moses is still in a dungeon in Midian. Uh, he's in jail. So Pharaoh's already getting cursed, you know, before Moses even steps up and says, let my people go. He's damn near, you know what I'm saying, getting wiped out already. Let's pick it up here. And he died with terror and shame, and his son Adikam, Adikam, reigned in his place. So the new Pharaoh's name is Adikam. Moses is still in jail. Moses is still in prison. Let's get it. Now, Adikam was 20 years old when he reigned over Mitzvah. He reigned four years. I'm in chapter 77. Let's go. In, in the 206th year of Israel's going down to Egypt, did Adikam reign over Egypt, but he continued not so long in his reign over Egypt as his fathers had continued their reigns. For Milol, his father, reigned 94 years in Mitzrayim. Okay. Okay. Look, Drop Nation, man, you're you going to have to write some of this down. I need you to dig on these names, man. So we got Milo, all right, M-E-L-O-L. -L. That's Adikam's father. Milo is the pharaoh, I mean, that just died when Moses was already reigning in Cush. So Milo is the pharaoh that was reigning while Moses was king of Cush. I need you to dig on this. I know y'all great reconners. Let's go. M-E-L-O-L, -L, Milo. And then Adikam, A-D-I-K-A-M, reigned after. But Milo is the name of the Pharaoh that was reigning while Moses was king of Cush for 40 years. Milo, his father, reigned 94 years in Egypt. But he was 10 years sick and died. He was 10 years sick, just like Moses was 10 years sick or in jail. Let's go. 
and all of Egypt called the name of Adikab Pharaoh like the name of his fathers, as was their custom to do in Mitzrayim. And all the wise men of Pharaoh called the name of Adikam Ahuz, Ahuz. So now you got this popping up, A-H-U-Z, match it up. For short, it's called Ahuz in Mitzrayim language. So Adikam is Ahuz, match it up. And Ahuz, or Adikam, was exceedingly ugly. <laughs> and he was a cubit in the span. He was very short, he had great beard, a great beard, which reached the soles of his feet. Look, man, I don't know how to tell y'all this. All right, <laughs> when you're dealing with these Egyptians that you just read about, all right, Adikam, he has a great beard, right? Like Santa Claus, right? <laughs> you deal with uh, Santa Claus, he has a great beard. Such and such has got a great beard. But we just have been brainwashed to think that, you know, Moshe and his beard and this and this this and Israelites and this and this and this is this phenotype of this and this. Look, man, you know, be careful <laughs> when you match up to the hijack. You know what I mean? Be careful when you are, are so zealous to be like the hijack and claim something that the hijack has, all right? You're gonna have to look with fresh eyes at some point. But yeah, man, the Mitzri, the Egyptian, the Pharaoh, had a great beard that went down to his feet, man. What a phenotype. Is he an Israelite? No, he's an Egyptian. He is King Hijack with a great beard hitting his feet. So, you know, all these you know what I'm saying, particular things all start to, you know, clarify, you know what I'm saying, as you start to really see the whole board, like, our people are our people, you know, you don't know them by their beard, <laughs> or you don't know them by their hair like this, or you don't know them even by their complexion like this, you know what I'm saying, a hijack has a darker complexion than me, you know what I'm saying, a hijack, you know what I'm saying, could have a, a lighter complexion. A, a, a righteous man could be darker or lighter or have hair like this or hair like this. Or a righteous man might have a beard. A righteous man may not have a beard. A hijack may have a beard. A hijack may not have a beard. But you gotta see clearly, look at your bro, look in his heart, case by case, and, and, and don't and don't be silly because the most high doesn't like this stuff. When you, when you start to put this stuff on your brothers or, or on your sisters and it's very silly, and you know that you just are trying to look more and more, what, like a hijack? But I don't think no one's going around saying, oh, Adikam had a beard going down to his, to, his, to his feet. So anybody with a beard must be a hijack. But no, you got folks saying, oh, anybody without this must be a that, you know what I mean? We gotta stop being so damn silly in our community. You know what I'm saying? Stop, you know, trying to put people here, put yourself up here because it is, you know what I mean? Just Serve your creator, man. Build yourself up. Build your family up. Focus on the things that matter. Stop tripping over silliness because it's hurting you and it's breaking us apart. When we bond off the concrete, which is what we do, when you have a bond because you are indigenous here, and you don't hold your brother, your sister to nothing else outside of just being real, being indigenous, and doing the best they can to speak on that, to, to, to create whatever platform they can uh, in their life to speak on that to the best of their ability or make some type of movement or action happen to the best of their dang on ability, you support that or you're gonna have to answer for it. If it's hijack, you're gonna know it by its fruit. If it's pure water, you're gonna know it by its fruit. Let's get it. There is no in-between with Hawa. Don't confuse yourself. Ye valiant, valiant men, don't confuse yourself. So Milo, his father, reigned 94 years in Egypt, but he was 10 years sick. All the children, or all of Mitzrayim, called him Ahuz, all right? So you got Ahuz was exceedingly ugly. He was exceedingly short. And he had a great beard, which reigned to the soles of his feet. And Pharaoh sat upon his father's throne to reign over Mitzrayim and he conducted the government of Mitzurim in his wisdom. And while he reigned, he, he exceeded his father. 
he exceeded his father and all the preceding kings in wickedness. In wickedness. And he increased his yoke over the children of Israel. So you got to look around. I mean, if you want to picture something, look for this ugly, short, bearded man with the biggest beard you ever seen, who is the most wicked man you ever seen. Just like Santa Claus. Let's get it. And Pharaoh sat upon his father's throne to reign over Mitzram, and he conducted the government. He reigned. While he reigned, he exceeded his father in all preceding kings in wickedness, and he increased his yoke over the children of Israel. He jammed you up more than anybody. While Moses was still in prison, but let's go. And he placed officers over them from among the children of Israel, and over these officers he placed taskmasters from among his servants, and he placed over them a measure of bricks for them to do according to that day. Day by day he turned back and went to Mitzrayim. In that time, the taskmasters of Pharaoh ordered the officers of the children of Israel according to the command of Pharaoh, saying, Thus says Pharaoh, do your work each day and finish your task and observe the daily measure of bricks Diminish not anything, and it shall come to pass that if you are deficient in your daily bricks. Now you go to work, nine to five. Those are your daily bricks. Thus says Pharaoh, right? Do your work each day. Go to work, Naga. Finish your task, Naga. <laughs> and observe the daily measure of, of bricks, man. Your daily measure of bricks is your job. Let's go. And it shall come to pass that if you are deficient in your daily bricks, I will put your children in their stead. I will make your children work for you, man. And the taskmasters of Mitzrayim did so in those days as Pharaoh had ordered them. And whenever any deficiency was found in the children of Israel's measure of their daily bricks, the taskmasters of Pharaoh will go to the women of the children of Israel and take infants and the children of Israel to the number of bricks deficient. So every brick they were deficient. Building what? What are they building with these bricks? What are they building? You, you figure it out. And every time they were deficient, an infant went missing. An infant went, went, went missing, man. So when they're pumping Nagalase into your babies, when they're pumping these vaccines, they're doing the same damn thing. An infant goes missing. And they would take them by force from their mother's laps and put them in the building instead of the bricks, man. So every brick that was deficient, they would substitute it with a child. Instead of a brick, they would put a child right there and say, well, no brick, I'll take your infant and I'll use your infant as a brick. Every brick they were missing, this Pharaoh, who exceeded all the Pharaohs before him in wickedness, who was the shortest, <laughs> who had a beard going all the way down to the floor. He said, every brick that these Israelites are shout, we're going to take their babies out of their mama's laps and we'll use their babies as bricks. While their fathers and mothers were crying over them and weeping, when they heard the weeping voice and their infants in the wall, they heard the weeping voice of their infants in the wall. Can you imagine hearing your baby crying from inside the wall because your baby was buried alive and used as a brick? Come on, man. Heart bone time, man. Let's go. And the taskmasters, or the slave masters, prevailed over Israel. And Israel that the Israelites should place their children in the building. So they put their children in the building, in the walls. So that a man placed his son in the wall and put mortar over him while his eyes wept over him and his tears ran down upon his child. And the slave masters of Egypt did so to the babies of Israel for many days. So you heard about them throwing your babies in the water. Did you hear that they used your bricks and put them in the walls and buried them alive and used them as bricks? 
just to keep you in a fear spell, and now they just shoot you dead in the street to keep you in a fear spell. And the number of all the children killed in the building was 270, some whom they had built upon instead of the bricks which had been left deficient for their fathers, and some who they had drowned out dead from the drawn out dead from the building, and the labor imposed upon the children of Israel in the days of Adikam or Azuz or Ahuz exceeded in hardship that which they performed in the days of the father of his father. And the children of Israel sighed every day on account of their heavy work. For they had said to themselves, Behold, when Pharaoh shall die, his son will rise up and lighten our work. Dang. That's like saying, man, when uh, George Bush gets out of office, Obama will come and lighten our load. Did it happen? Behold, when Pharaoh shall die, his son will rise up and lighten our work. But they increased the latter work more than the former. Things have gotten worse than the former. And the children of Israel sighed at this, and their cry ascended to Hawah on account of their labor. And Hawah heard the voice of the children of Israel and their cry. In those days, Hawah remembered to them his covenant where he said rejoice for the time is near you don't know the appointed time but it's near man be happy man love your wife love your children love your brothers and sisters be steady people that know me know man i don't like phones man i don't like talking on the phone weeks may go by <laughs> when i'll be you know having a phone conversation that's how much i don't even want that in my ear but I give props and I give love to my true ones that remain steady. They don't need a, a daily Tuesday conversation. Every time I talk to them, they steady, man. It's all praise the most high. I've been dodging hijacks. Let's go, man. How you doing? Let's go. What do you need? They asking me what I need. That's love right there, man. Let's go. Aha to the tribe. Shabbatah. Let's go, man. Rise up. Quam. Let's go. And Hawah heard the voice of the children of Israel and their cry in those days. Hawah remembered to them his covenant. The sound, man, the vibration. And Hawah saw the burden of Israel in their heavy work in those days, and he determined to deliver them. Verse 26, chapter 77. And Moshe, the son of Amram, was still confined in the dungeon in those days. Moshe was still confined in the dungeon in those days. Most, he's in the dungeon for 10 years, man. You want to compare yourself to Moshe? You can't walk in them shoes. Stand up. And Moshe, the sons of Amram, was still confined in the dungeon in those days in the house of Reuel, or Jethro, right? The Medianite. And Zipporah, the daughter of Reuel, did support him with food secretly day by day so you know what i'm saying that's his piece that's his woman man she chose up she looked out for him, man now he's in his 60s at this time going on 70. Uh, he, he, he ain't out of prison till he's 76 let's go and at the end of 10 years which was the first year of the reign of pharaoh over mitzrayim in the place of his father all right so now we got some collaboration so Moses gets out of jail during the first year of the reign of Ahuz. <laughs> All right. Love to silence near my man. Drop, man. Oh, man, let me get my... I'm going to take it on in, man. But I need y'all to get something, man. This is pulling a lot of stuff together. A lot of folks haven't really, we, we saw it, but it's perfect time to dig on certain things because when Daniel says the books will be unsealed, well, yeah, you know, it means you got to look back with a dragonfly perspective. You have to unseal it. You have to see what light you can bring out of it, what energy, right, what frequency you can now unseal to say, this is now adding up. So now we have Atticom or ha Ahu's 
who's the Pharaoh, right when Moses is getting out of jail. And his pops, Milo, M-E-L-O-L, L-O-L, <laughs> Me-L-O-L, he's the Pharaoh while Moses is king of Cush for 40 years and, be, and before that. He's the Pharaoh that was trying to kill Moses for slaying the Egyptian who had just, you know, raped the Hebrew woman in front of her man, all right? So first you go from Milol to Ahuz or Adikam. And Adikam is now the Pharaoh during the first year when Moses is getting out. As soon as Moses gets out after that 10 years, it's the first year of the reign of Adikam or Ahuz. I can lie, man. I can lie, man. Get you a copper vessel, man. Start drinking water out that copper vessel, man. I'm still looking for, you know, a really nice one. I know they got some on Amazon, but I'm still looking for, like, you know what I mean? I met, I'll probably find one in, like, a garage sale or something. A nice copper pitcher, man. Just pour my water in, you know, get out of this plastic stuff. Still try to put some salt, some pink Himalayan salt in it, man. Love to Uno, man. What it do? <clears throat> Let's take it in, man. Verse, uh, verse 27 is gone. And Moses was confined in the dungeon in the house of Reuel for 10 years. And after the end of these 10 years, which was the first year of the reign of Ahuz or Pharaoh over Mitzrayim in the place of his father, Zipporah said to her father, Reuel, no person inquires or seeks after the Hebrew man whom you did bind in prison now 10 years. And I asked, I said, who's checking for Moses while Moses is locked up? Yeah, you ain't never been in these situations. Cool. Maybe you ain't, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? But look, man, who's checking for him, man? Who got his books? The only person that got his books was his woman. So everyone's checking for Moses now. Everyone talk Moses. Everybody want to talk Moses. But who's checking for him? Moses was locked up. Ain't nobody check on him but support. What does support say? I mean, it's a damn shame, right? This is Moses freeing the children of Israel, and ain't nobody checking for him. They didn't say no Israelites are checking for him. What'd she say? She's telling her pop, she said, man, it's been 10 years. Nobody has inquired or seen. Or, or sought after or seeks after this Hebrew man. Nobody is seeking after this Hebrew man. So it's all good if you feel lonely sometimes. All right, you know what I mean? You gotta go within sometimes. You know what I'm saying? You gonna have to know that you got the goods. You can't expect someone to come confirm that for you, especially when you are locked in a dungeon. And whether you're locked in a dungeon figuratively, whether you got a dungeon going on right now, don't just fall back and say, nobody's checking for me, man. Nobody check for Moses, man. Nobody check for Moshe. So get up, stand up. You got it in you already, let's go. Now therefore, if it seems good in your sight, let us send and see whether he is living or dead. <laughs> so she's been taking care of him. She knows she know he alive, but she's telling Pops like, well, why don't you just go see if he's alive or not, man? And after Ray well, her father answered and said to her, has ever such a thing happened that a man should be shut up in a prison without food for 10 years and that he should live? And Zipporah answered her saying, Surely you have heard that Hawa of the Hebrews is great and awful and does wonders for them at all times. He it was who delivered Abraham from Ur of the Chasdeim and Isaac from the sword of his father. And Jacob from the angel of Hawa who wrestled with him at the, at the ford of Yabok. Also, with this man has he done many things. He delivered him from the river of Mizraim and from the sword of Pharaoh and from the children of Cush. And also he can deliver him from famine and make him live. Verse 35. And the king seemed good in the sight of and the thing seemed good in the sight of Rehuel, and he did according to the word of his daughter, and sent to the dungeon to ascertain what became of Moshe, and he saw 
and behold, that the man Moshe was living in the dungeon, standing upon his feet, praising and praying to Hawah of his ancestors. And Reuel commanded Moshe to be brought out of the dungeon, so they shaved him, and he changed his prison garments and ate bread. And afterwards, Moshe went into the garden of Reuel, which was behind the house, and he there prayed to Hawah, who had done mighty wonders for him. After 10 years in a dungeon, he's still praising Hawa because the poor kept him alive. Love to Aqua V, man, who just had that, you know, terrible accident, but she didn't come around saying, I cursed the Most High. She said, praise the Most High. Because when I needed it, someone came and lifted me on their shoulders. When I needed it, someone drove me to get that rental car. When I needed it, someone took me from here to there or checked up on me and made sure I'm good. And that GoFundMe's coming. I'm working with the sister. We're going to make sure we get that up pronto. And you'll be able to support the sister in getting back in the brand new Green Dracon. Let's go. She called her van the Green Dragon. All right, if you didn't get it the first time, she had an accident. Flipped over in the black ice. She hit some black ice. You know what I mean? She didn't really, you know I mean, coming from Louisiana, she didn't know to not press the brakes. You know what I mean? But she, you know, just reacted instinctively and that's what we all most you hit something you hit some ice you start sliding you might start hitting the brakes and then you know she kept spinning the van flipped over and she walked out without any broken bones without any gashes or nothing man so she came out and said all praise for why let's get the new drink green jacan now i got some experience i, I, I want to keep sharing it i want to keep growing she's just all praise for why and I, I'm, I'm i'm witnessing the spirit of our sister I witness in the spirit of our sisters, our aqua ya, man, aha, for showing us, us brothers, man, how to stand up and praise the Most High. Let's go. Let's get it. And it was that while he was prayed, he looked opposite of him, and behold, a sapphire stick was placed in the ground. A sapphire stick. So Moses is praying, all praise the Most High. Then appears a sapphire stick. Let's get it. Placed in the ground, which was planted in the midst of the garden. Planted. And he approached the stick, and he looked, and behold, the name of Hawa was engraved on it. Written and developed upon the stick, and he read it and stretched forth his hand, and he plucked it like a forest tree from the thicket, and the stick was in his hand. So it's kind of like that Excalibur sword, right? Can you pull the sword out the ground? Moses had to pull this sapphire stick out the ground let's go and this is the stick which all the works of hawa were performed sapphire so when they present a wooden staff just know it's a sapphire stick it's pure crystal and what comes out of a crystal wand or a crystal stick now you're dealing with that merle and oh you're talking magic did moses perform magic Yes. Did they call him a wizard? Yes. Is he code word Merlin? Yes. Are we talking dracons, dragons and knights and Merlin magic? Yes. Are we talking Israelites as a concrete, not the abstract? Magic or energy, frequency and vibration of Hawa through crystallization? Yes. 43 or 42 and this is the stick which all the works of Hawa were performed after he had created the heaven and earth. And all the host of them, seas, rivers, and all their fish. So all the work of Hawa was performed with the sapphire stick when he created the earth. So the staff of Moshe is the same sapphire stick. Remember, in the book of Enoch, it explains the, the abode of the Most High, right? Way above with this crystal and sapphire floors and sapphires always described in the abode or kingdom of the most high you know what i'm saying in the <coughs> shamayim you know the you know the, the heavens the higher heavens you know what i'm saying the firmament the crystal firmament you always got this sapphire floor this of sapphire and crystal now this same sapphire stick was used to create what let's read it this is the stick which all the works of Hawa were performed. The staff of Moses is the sapphire stick or wand which all the works of Hawa were performed, engraved. 
after he had created the heavens and earth. And all the host of them seas, rivers, and all their fish. And when Hawa had driven Adam from the Garden of Eden, he took the stick in his hand and went into the ground from which he was taken. I'm going to back it up. I can see you thinking, man. I can see your mind bone computing, computers computing, recalibrating. Let's recalibrate together, man. Let's see clearly. Let's empty our cups, man. Remember, you got to keep emptying your cup. You came over here with a full cup. Man, what's Drop talking about, man? You over here talking that yang yang. You on that wing wham? No, I'm on that wong kong. Are we on that wing wham or are we on that wong kong? Let's get it for the dismount. So this is the same stick Hawa did all these great, you know, miracles with, right? And when Hawa had driven Adam from the Garden of Eden, he took the stick. Hawa, he took the stick. Hawa, Hawa took the stick in his hand and went and tilled the ground with which he was taken. And the stick came down to Noah, and he was given to Shem and his descendants. So, okay, Adam has this stick in the Garden of Eden. Hawa, Hawa. This is the same stick that was done, used to do all of Hawa's work. Hawa has this stick, right? After the earth is created, Adam now has this stick who is tilling the ground. The same stick that Adam has is now being given to Noah and was given to Shem and his descendants until it came into the hand of Abraham. So Abraham has a sapphire staff too, a crystal staff, Abraham. Yeah, we're talking knights, right? Let's go. So the same sapphire stick is passed from, you know what I'm saying, Adam to Noah, Shem, Abraham. And then Abraham had given all he had to his son Isaac. And after that, and, and, and he also gave to him this stick and when Jacob had fled to Padan Aram he took it in his hand so now Jacob got the sapphire staff let's go and when he returned to his father he had not left it behind him also when he went down to Egypt and took it into his hand and gave it to Joseph so now Joseph got the sapphire staff when they went to Egypt now Joseph got it let go one portion above his brethren for Jacob had taken it by force from his brother Esau. How did Esau get it? Looked like they was doing some jack moves, right? Now, we get this staff because remember, Esau, you know, firstborn of Isaac. All right, so of course Isaac, you know, is, is, is giving Esau everything, right? He's like, here, here's your birthright. Esau sells his birthright. He's also sells his staff. Now his staff goes to Jacob. And after the death of Joseph, the nobles of Mitzrayim, of Mitzrayim came into the house of Joseph and the stick came into the hand of Ra'uel, the Medianite. Whoa. So the nobles of Mitzrayim came into the house of Joseph. They got the stick. Egyptians stole the stick from Joseph. The sapphire stick was stolen by the Egyptians from the house of Joseph. And the stick came into the hand of Retuel or, or Jethro the Midianite. And when he went out of Mitzrayim or Egypt, he took it in his hand and planted it in his garden. <coughs> Wait, why did they keep planting the stick in their garden? What's with this sapphire stick being planted in a garden? You're going to have to... You're going to have to dig on it. You're going to have to tell me, man. Leave a comment. Why do you think the sapphire stick keeps getting planted? All right, Red Uwell now planted it in his garden. Let's go. It was planted before in the Garden of Eden. Let's go. And all the mighty men of Kayini or Kainin tried to pluck it when they, when they endeavored to get support of his daughter. So these men that tried to hijack support, they tried to take it out of the ground, all right? 
so that the stick remained planted in the garden of Reguel. It says, but they were unsuccessful, just like the Excalibur sword. They're getting this shit for somewhere. They're getting it from somewhere. I'm telling you, you are the foundation. You are the concrete, not the abstract. This sapphire crystal staff is now planted in Jethro's garden on Reguel. These hijrax try to take Zipporah. They try to take the stick. They're unsuccessful. so that the stick remained planted in the garden of Reuel until he came, until he came who had a right to it and took it. I'm out of here like this, baby. We out of here, baby. Drop Nation with it, do. We out of here, baby. This was planted and it was unsuccessful at anyone taking it out because they had no right to it. Reuel had to plant it and leave it because he had no right to it. All he can do is plant it and put it down in the garden. Now comes Moshe after 10 years in jail in a dungeon. Jethro didn't even give the man no food. Zipporah had to sneak it in, so they put him in jail to die. You ever been left to die? It may change you, man. It may change you, man. But Moses came out praising, man. When you go through a situation, a hard time, come out and praise a while. Let him know, man. I, I, the Wada, I am grateful for being redeemed, man. Praise the Most High for your redemption and praise him that he molded you in this time. Because now Moses got molded in those 10 years in that dungeon, 40 years in Cush, 50 years of getting molded after fleeing Egypt, putting that man down by law. Now he's ready. Now he's ready to pull the sapphire staff from the garden. Let's go. And when Raul saw that the stick in the saw the stick in the hand of Moshe, remember verse 50, so the stick remained planted in the garden until he came who had a right to it. So Moses has a birthright to it. And he took it. And when Raoul saw the stick in the hand of Moshe, he wondered at it, and he gave him his daughter Zipporah for a woman. Man, that's uh, the end of 77. We're gonna pick up. We're gonna pick up right here at 78. All right. And we're gonna take it all the way home, man. Uh, it's got about 90. I mean, about like 91, 92 chapters or something, man. We're going to... All right, so we're going to stop at chapter 91. You know, I just want to take it like that for the dismount, get this refresh of this Moshe so you can understand the trial. If you don't understand somebody's walk, then you can't really see their whole design. If you, if you don't comprehend another perspective of, of Moshe's grind, then you can't comprehend on how you connect back with your priesthood and your priest king. You don't, you, you don't overstand that you going through a hard time or you going through a situation, whatever the case is. Somebody might be able to come in and just judge you for, for your situation. Somebody could have just came in Moshe's life and say, oh, man, you in jail. Most I ain't with you. You probably getting what you deserve. But was he getting what he deserved or was the Most High proving him further, getting him ready, molding his spirit, molding his soul for the journey to come? so he can have the purified drop, the healing dew and the frequency to pull out that crystal, that sapphire staff, man, that Excalibur sword. He got to draw the sword out from the garden. He had to get ready for that. So don't be in such a hurry to judge somebody as the Most High is, you know, letting their design be known, letting their design be crystallized. You, you rock with what's inside of you. Don't project your insecurities on someone else's flow and please don't project your insecurities and your confusion on the entire way of all the water when you don't comprehend the design and the flow of even the hard times even the bad times even the part that looks confusing I mean I'm sure Moses looked very stagnant sitting in jail nobody checking for him somebody can judge Moses right there and say man you stagnant you ain't moving 
you ain't moving. So what did Ephraim, what did Ephraim do? They said, man, he ain't moving. He's the king of Kush. He's, in, he's all jammed up. We ain't even checking for him. We know that we're valiant. We know we're strong. Let's go. It's, it's the most high's time because we say so, because we feel antsy. We feel stagnant, so the wave must be stagnant. We feel stagnant, so all the water must be stagnant, unless you have a 360 degree perspective. And if you're saying you do, <laughs> then you, may, you better make sure, man, you uh, are acting accordingly. Or come back and say, you know what, maybe I don't have a 360 degree, a round table, a night perspective. Maybe I don't have a dracon flow. Maybe I'm seeing dragons the wrong way. Maybe I'm all jammed up, you know what I'm saying, because of revelations. Maybe I've been inception. Maybe I've been, you know what I'm saying, brainwashed at some point to have some type of triggers that when the books are unsealed and you start diving into certain info, it looks complicated. It looks uh, something anti-simplistic, but in the reality, you are just learning yourself. You're learning how you flow. You're learning how Moshe flow. And if you don't want to know nothing about Dracon energy, if you don't want to know nothing about fire, water, air, and ether, then don't even try to touch that sapphire staff. If you don't have pure water, pure air, pure fire, and you're not about that pure earth, that pure land, don't even try to touch that crystallized sapphire staff. Because you have to have a right to it. And sometimes you have to get proven to earn your right. Much of Hive Drop Nation, we're gonna pick this up. We're gonna keep it flowing. I enjoy, man, being black, being back. <laughs> Not being black, but being back <laughs> in your face bone. But your eye to the copper colored tribe is found here. You know what I mean? We're waking up, man. We're digging on it. we doing this, you know what I'm saying, for each other, man. And for that, it's all Hawa. Because all Hawa wants us to do is be there for each other. I love y'all, man. Peace to y'all families. And it's time, man. I know the weather's crazy. You're going through jam ups. We're just trying to have a home or a checkpoint. When you go see us in the ether, you know what I'm saying, Monday through Friday, 10 to 10 to midnight, you know what I mean, or really, you know what I mean, we just go, but, you know, and, and you dig on all the great shows, and you, you go click on that show schedule, we just want to have a checkpoint, this is our checkpoint, we might not physically be able to gather everywhere, every week, or every day, but we're here for you, and we're in the ether, go check out the chat room, the drop, drop, chatter, chat, 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 chatter, man, it's going down, password is 1234, to get you through the dough, I'll see y'all tonight. In the ether, Khan drop.